Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves staring into space as stargazers. For millennia, humans have marveled at the cosmos. Modern astronomy gives us valuable insight about what's happening in the universe, but there is still a sense of wonder to be had in looking at the expanse above us. You'll be calibrating your telescopes as you create a beautiful display of the night sky by bringing into view celestial objects of various types like planets, moons, asteroid clouds, black holes, and satellites. Stellar is a strategic two-player game that takes 30 minutes to play. It's for ages 8 and up and published by Renegade Game Studios. Today, we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now, I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Well, without further ado, let's get started. Stellar is a strategic two-player card game in which your stargazers calibrating your telescopes to bring into view celestial objects of various types, like black holes or moons. But you'll also be building sequential numbers of the different types in your own notebook. And for each of the different types, you'll be adding up all the stars in your telescope and multiplying those by the largest sequential set of numbers of that type in your notebook but you're also trying to have the highest value of printed numbers in different sections of your telescope to win majority bonuses against your opponent. But you're also trying to be diverse by having at least one of each type in your telescope. And you'll do so with a creative mechanism of drawing a card from a row, playing a card from your hand, and with that number, also being forced to play this card that turn. And even with streamlined mechanisms, special cards add to the depth and strategy of the game that's played in 30 minutes or less. To set up, each player is going to get a set of 12 telescope cards. One player is going to get the ones with the pink back, and the other one's going to get the ones with the blue backs. Now on the front side of those 12 cards, you'll see that they're numbered in the bottom left-hand corner, 1 through 12. Each player is going to build their own telescope in front of them with these cards. Now you'll be building this starting at the top with the lowest number 1, and working your way up left to right, top to bottom, 2, 3, and the next ones will be 4, 5, and so on and so forth. And when you're finished, it will make a telescope picture just like this. So there's one on the top, then two rows of two, then a row of three, then a row of four. But you'll see how it works together as the picture comes together. And make sure you leave room below it to play cards. This is going to be your notebook. Next, the yellow-backed Celestial Objects deck has five cards in it that have a diamond in the bottom right-hand corner. So search through this deck and find those five cards. You're going to shuffle those five cards up and deal two to each player face down. Then each player will take one of those starter cards and place it face up on their number one telescope card. They'll place the other one face up just below their telescope in their notebook. It doesn't matter which card you pick to go where because all the starter cards are balanced. There's just simply one of each type. At this point, there'll be one of those diamond starter cards left that you did not deal out that you had separated at the beginning. And you'll simply shuffle that card back into the deck. Then from that shuffled deck, you'll deal two cards out to each player as their starting hand. Then, next to that draw deck, you're going to find the cards numbered 1 through 5 and place them this way, with number 1 closest to the deck and number 5 furthest from the deck. Then you'll simply draw five cards, one for each, face up, and place it under each of those. Finally, you'll give each player a reference card and you'll decide any way you see fit to see who will be the starting player. The object of the game is to have the most points in the end. In the game, there's five different types of cards. We have planets, moons, asteroids, interstellar clouds, and black holes. Think of those as suits, if you will. Now, these cards have numerical values, and they have the amount of stars. Each of those will help you score points depending on where you play them throughout the game. Over the course of the game, you'll end up playing cards each round to your telescope so that there'll be a total of 12 cards here at the end. And below your telescope in your notebook, you'll also be playing a card there every turn, so you'll have a total of 12 cards here in the end as well. In order to make the rest of this video make sense as to what you're doing, I gotta tell you about how you score in the end. Now you can follow along with the final scoring side of your player reference. At the end of the game, essentially there's gonna be three main ways to score. One of them is the stars times multipliers. For each of your different 
types, in this case, this is the black holes, you're going to take the number of stars, so we have two, four, a total of six of those stars, and you're going to multiply that amount of stars by the amount of cards that you have in your longest consecutive run of numbers. We have a one here, but then we have a four and a five. These two are consecutive. This one does us no good here in our notebook. So here we have two cards, that's our longest consecutive for this type. So it will be two, because there's two cards, times those six stars, so 12 points for black holes. You'll end up doing that for all of the other types. After you've scored all of those types, you'll then look at your section majorities. There's three parts of the telescope. The top five cards are the top, the three cards in the middle is the middle, and the four cards on the bottom is the bottom. In this case, this is the entire top section. In this case, you'll add up all the numbers in the top section. So we have two, four, six, nine, 14. We have a total of 14. If you have more, a higher value, then your opponent in their top five cards, you'll get 10 points. Whoever has the most of those will get the 10 points. If you tie, you get nothing. Now you'll do that scoring for each of the three sections of your telescope against your opponent. Now the last way to score is a diversity bonus. Now you do this if you have at least one card from all five card types. For example, we have a black hole here. Well, we have moon here, we have planet here, we have interstellar cloud here, and we have an asteroid here. So we have all five. As long as we have one of each, we will then score the 10 points, otherwise you get nothing. Those are the three main ways to score. So now that you know that you're sort of trying to go for stars times your multipliers in your notebook, and majority of numbers in the three different sections, and possible diversity, the rest of what, how we actually do this will make a little bit more sense. So the flow of the game is back and forth. You're going to be adding a card to your telescope and to your notebook each round. So you'll play a total of 11 rounds because you started with one card in each spot. So there'll be a total of 12 in each, the telescope and your notebook at the end of the game. So let's go through how you do this. Feel free to follow along on your player reference card in the turn sequence as I go through these four steps of a turn. So step one is to simply add one of these cards that's under one of these numbers to your hand. You simply take it and put it in your hand. Now the next step is to play a card from your hand. It could be one you already had in your hand or the one you just picked up in the previous step. Now when you play the card, it can go either in your telescope or below your telescope in your notebook. Now if you're placing in your telescope and you're placing a card type that matches one that you already have, in this case the black holes, you have to place that card adjacent to one of your other cards of that card type, meaning a card that shares an edge. So I can play this card here or here. Conversely, if I was playing a planet card, I could play it here, 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 or here because they all share an edge with this card. Notice I cannot play it here because diagonals do not share an edge. Now, if you're playing a card type that you don't yet have in your telescope, you can play it on any open spot, meaning a spot that has just the telescope background as in the beginning of the game. You cannot play a card where you already have a card. So let's say we decided to play this planet card here and notice it shares an edge with that card. And notice that we played the card has a three on it. The next step is to play a card from the road directly and you play the card that's under the number that you just played. We just played this card number three of planets on our telescope, which means we look at the number three here and we have to play the card under here. In this case, a one of planet. Now, where you play this has to be the opposite place that you just played the card. For example, we just played in the telescope, so this card that we played has to go in our notebook. If we had decided to play in a notebook in the first part of our turn here in step two, we would have had to have played this into our telescope. That means that each round you're playing one card to your telescope and one card to your notebook. So in this case, we just played a three card to our telescope, which means we're gonna be playing this card to our notebook, which means we're going to place it just directly below our telescope. Now I fast forwarded just a bit to a future turn. Let's say I was playing this card into my notebook, the three of asteroids. Now I already have a two and a four. When you play a card, you're always gonna put it sort of in order from uh, bottom to top in numerical order as close as you can. So in this case, we have two, three, and four. Now remember, the largest string of consecutive numbers is gonna be your multiplier times the stars in your telescope at the end of the game. Now during that step, we played this card because it was the number three and that was the number we played into our telescope. However, let's assume we had played a two into our telescope and we were supposed to play this card from the row. In this case, if it's empty, you simply play the top card of this deck into the respective spot. Meaning, if you already played into your telescope, it goes into your notebook. If in the beginning of your turn you played this into your uh, notebook, this card would go into your telescope. 
That means at this point in your turn, there's going to be one or two open slots. For each open slot, you're simply going to refill the row by the top of that deck. It's then going to be the next player's turn. Since each round you're playing one card into your telescope and one card into your notebook, there may be times where you cannot or don't want to place something into your telescope. In that case, you must play a card face down in any open spot, meaning a spot that doesn't already have a card. We'll talk about the ramifications of the scoring of these cards a little bit later. Now there's two special card types. One of them is a six slash zero card. Now there's only one of these special cards for each of the five types. Now when you play this card into your telescope, it's always a six, which is going to help you for the majority of scoring in the different sections of your telescope. If you play it into your notebook under your telescope, it could be used as a six, which would help chain this for a larger multiplier. Or it could be used as a zero for the same reason in your notebook, but you don't have to decide in your notebook if this is a zero or six to the end of the game. There are also satellite cards. Now these cards are not a type of card, but they count as the number that's printed here as majority for that section of the telescope. And since it's not a type, it can be played in any open spot. If you play it into your notebook, you could put it within any other type. In this case, we made it the one as part of the interstellar clouds type to sort of chain together our largest consecutive numbers there. Now this card, you can move between different types until the end of the game. However, if you take a satellite card from the row and add it to your hand, then your opponent may choose to discard and refill the entire row at the start of their next turn. And if the deck is ever to run out, take the cards discarded that way, shuffle them up to create a new deck. Players will continue taking turns back and forth until the end of the round where both players have completed their telescope, meaning that 11 rounds have passed and there are 12 total cards on your telescope because you started with one in it at the beginning of the game. Which also means you'll have 12 cards in your notebook as well. Now at this point, you'll still have two cards in your hand. You will choose one to place into your notebook like this. The other one you will simply discard out of the game. You then use this score pad to keep track of your score with the three main ways of scoring that I talked about in detail at the beginning of this video. So I'm not going to go through the entire final scoring, but I am going to go over a couple of exceptions here to help you through it. I want to show you some exceptions for scoring in the stars times multipliers we have one, two, three, four cards of the planet types. And we have three, six, eight, ten total stars. But in the notebook, I have zero cards of the planet type, which means it would be ten times zero, zero points for planets in this case. Now for the black holes, I have three cards here, which is two, four, six total stars. Now remember, this six zero card can be decided as if it's a zero or a six at the end of the game. And this satellite card could have been moving between different types until the end of the game. So in this case, we have a three, four, there's two fives, and then we're going to say this is a six. Now, even though there's two fives here, it doesn't matter. They're both the same value. They don't count for both of these. So it's going to be one, two, three, four consecutive numbers. So that's four times the six uh, stars for the black hole. So that's 24 points. And you'd simply do that for all the other types. Now, when looking at the section majorities, this bottom section here I want to highlight is we have a satellite. Remember, a satellite is not a type, but it does count for its printed value in majorities. So we have five, nine, ten. And remember, any face down cards is a number of three. So we have 13 for this bottom section. Again, if we had more than our opponent in that value, we'd get 10 points. Uh, if they had more than us, they'd get 10. If we were tied, both of us would get zero. You do that for all three sections as shown on your final scoring card. And remember, for the diversity bonus, if you have at least one of each type, you'd get 10 points. In this case, we are missing the asteroid type, so we would not score this. And remember that the satellites are not a type. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's tied, they share the victory. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Stellar and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but so will Renegade Game Studios.